Hello, friends. Glad to have you with us once more as we look at topics uh, concerning this Christmas season that we're in. And I chose the topic of Gabriel speaking to Mary. Now, to me, that brought something interesting that we'll discuss as we get into our study. First of all, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us once more to present these topics to your children, God, that they might gain strength during this season where minds are inclined to look toward the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We ask your Holy Spirit to guide and direct our minds as we spend these next few minutes in thy word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The story is taken from the first chapter of Luke, beginning with verse 26. It says, And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. Now let's stop right there. Here we have probably the most one of the most important events to occur, and that is the incarnation of our Lord and Savior to be a man. And how do you go about choosing the vessel, the human vessel that you're going to give this gift to? Now we have to think, now this young maiden, Mary, had to be a teenager. You know, during those days, usually when you are espoused to someone, uh, these were arranged marriages. And a lot of times young women uh, during the teenage years did become brides. And Joseph, as we know, had been married previously because he had other uh, children uh, when Jesus was born. So uh, uh, he was a, you know, his wife had died, and so he was probably seeking someone uh, uh, to incorporate into his household. But how does God go about choosing all of those maidens, you know, uh, in Israel? How do you go about choosing? And so when I thought about that, my mind was taken to this text in Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 16, uh, beginning with verse 9, it says this. It says, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Hmm. So there must have been something going on within Mary that God recognized to be a prime candidate, not only to bear of uh, this seed of the Most Holy One, but also to be instrumental in instructing him as he grew. See, very important. How many teenagers, <laughs> if we look in our day and time, could we point to and say, yeah, they would fulfill, you know, the qualifications? Probably not many. There must have been something special in Mary for her mindset was one of service. Her mindset was one of dedication, of, of appreciation to what God has done. See? And so when we look around, we say, well, you know, what, you know, what are the qualifications? What, what does God require of us? If you look at Micah, and you turn to chapter 6 of Micah, when we look at verse number 8, it says this, He has showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee? The answer, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. Those are the requirements. And so Mary fulfilled those requirements. So going back to our scripture in Luke chapter 1, it says this in verse 28, And the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou among women. Now that's something powerful. And I'm sure Mary, when she heard that, she was saying, well, what? Who am I? What? Uh, you know, how can you make these statements to me? Because in verse 29, it says, and when she saw him, she was troubled or confused at his saying and cast in her mind or wondered in her mind what manner of greeting or salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Just like Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, now Mary has found favor. Verse 31, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Now, when she started listening to this, she's thinking, ah, the promised Messiah, I am going to be that virgin to bear this promise in the scripture. Verse 33, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Now see, Mary is going to now, how? You know, I know his virgin supposed to be, but how is this going to happen? Verse 35, and the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost mm, shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Mary's response, and Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Look at this. This young mind of this young woman, listening to the message of this angel, without doubt, <laughs> she, all she wanted to know was, you know, how is it going to happen? You know, I, I believe what you're saying. I'm honored at what you're saying. But how is this going to happen? And the angel explained. Now, see, we don't think about the ramifications of this. She was betrothed to Joseph. You know, in those days, you were betrothed and then the marriage might occur, you know, months down the line. But you were considered married, even though you weren't staying together, but you were considered husband and wife then. So what do you think was going, had to be going through her mind after the angel left? Oh, I'm going to have a child. I'm not even married. Pretty soon, evidence is going to be shown that I'm pregnant. How do I explain it to my friends? Will they believe me when I say, well, the Holy Spirit, you know, came upon me and I buried this child. I don't think so. So with the blessing and the responsibility also comes a critiquing of that individual because people won't understand what God is doing and has done in your life. So how does that relate to us as individuals? You know, sometimes we go through situations where no one understands but us. Sometimes God takes us down pathways where to other individuals, they will look, well, why are you going that way? But see, we have to be true to God and true to ourselves. What God has commissioned, he will bring to pass. When his word goes forth, it will not return unto him without fulfilling that purpose. So in your life, Sometimes you might feel ostracized, alone in your situation. But as long as you're obeying God, 
as long as you have that meek and contrite spirit, as long as you are listening carefully to that still small voice, he will guide and direct your paths. And just like Mary was called blessed and highly favored, so will you. God bless you during this season.